What's going on, warriors? I went deep sea diving to see if I could locate some really good sea moss because I realized there's some misinformation that's out there with sea moss. We're gonna dive into that today. And the reason why I'm doing this video too, man, is I went to see a friend the other day, right? I go see my friend. He says, I've been on sea moss for about a week now. I don't notice anything. So I go to his house. He's on the sea moss. He says he's on sea moss. I'm like, show me the sea moss. In a Ziploc bag, pulls it out. When I tell you that this is not sea moss, this looked like someone grabbed some stuff off the lawn and put it in a Ziploc bag. And my guy was thinking that it was sea moss. I had to tell him, my guy, man, you just got hustled. This is not sea moss. Somebody went on their front lawn, grabbed some scissors, cut it up, put it in a bag, gave it to you and called it sea moss. And you know what? I'm at a point where I want to make sure that does not happen to anyone else. <laughs> but truthfully, what ended up happening is he had something that was said Irish sea moss on it, but it actually was not Irish sea moss. It was a different sea moss version of it. So I felt like it was important because I feel like this is something that might happen a lot. And I wanted to make sure that you guys have all the information you guys need when it comes to the health benefits, when it comes to making sure you source the right sea moss that's making sense, nothing that is being fabricated and sold to you. So we're gonna dive into that today to make sure you guys have what you guys need. I don't want any of my people getting played. If it's your first time on the channel, guys, I help diabetics to build muscle, burn fat, control their blood sugars overall. But if you're not a diabetic, but you like powerful supplement reviews, kind of like this one, or you like vlog reviews or food reviews, hey, even if you're not a diabetic, stick around, be part of the family, smash the subscribe button, hit that bell notification, hit that like button, just helps videos like mine get out there a little bit more often. Oh, welcome to Warrior Zone, boom, showtime, baby. CMOS. Now, CMOS is a type of seaweed, but not all seaweeds are sea moss. And sea moss and seaweeds grow. And I'm just, we're going to break this down, guys, so you know classifications. So it makes sense for you in terms of what you're grabbing. Seaweeds are just a diverse group of marine plant life that grow underwater, right? They also grow on rocks as well, rivers, lakes. And so it's a wide range of this plant life that grows. And one of the ones that we're probably most familiar with that you've heard of is Irish moss or Irish sea moss. Now there's a lot of sea moss out there that has been labeled as Irish sea moss, but it's not actually Irish sea moss. Seaweeds have been used in many different cultures around the world. You also see seaweed being used in Japanese medicine, cuisine, Chinese medicine, cuisine, and even across the Caribbean for thousands of years, Ayurvedic medicine. But the most popular sea moss people are probably familiar with is Irish sea moss. And so Irish sea moss grows on the coast of the Atlantic and you can find it in more temperate environments like Ireland. Now with Irish sea moss, there's actually a famine that happened in Ireland between 1845 and 1852. What the Irish did was use the Irish sea moss to help them to overcome starvation and disease that would, was happening due to the potato famine that they had. Now this is causing a, a, a bacteria and a disease that infected the crops that they used and potato was one of their, their largest food source that they used during that time and so they didn't have any potatoes, it was hard to get nutrients in. And so in order to get their nutrients in, they relied on sea moss, specifically Irish moss because Irish moss grows mainly in their region. And so I'm saying this because sea moss has blown up on the internet for thousands of years. It's been used across history leading up to today to help teach people to improve how much nutrients they have in their body. And that some of the benefits of sea moss can help everything from joint health to digestive health and helping people to fight cancer, along with detoxification and immune boosting properties as well. So we see there's just a wide list of things that sea moss can help us do to take our health to the next level. So even though there's a wide range of sea mosses that are out there, there's two that we're gonna talk about today because they're probably the most prominent that you're gonna hear about and you're gonna see. It's important to be able to distinguish between the two so you know what you're getting, so you don't feel like you've been duped and maybe the one that you have is not necessarily what's being labeled on the package. Hey, what's up buddy? Nice of you to join the film. Do you want some sea moss? There's three different types of seaweeds and sea moss falls into one of these categories. So we have green algae, which is called chlorophyta. We've got brown algae, which is pheophysia. Then you've also got red algae, which is called rhodophyta. And within this category or this classification called rhodophyta, and this consists of about 70% of the algae that you're gonna find is grouped in this rhodophyta category. And this rhodophyta category includes sea mosses like 
Irish sea moss, and it also includes another sea moss we're gonna talk about today, which is called Glacillaria. Key one that we're gonna talk about today is our red algae. And so our red algae again includes the Glacillaria and that, that we'll talk about today. And this is actually what this is right here. It's the genus uh, Glacillaria. And Glacillaria would be called the genus. And then under that, you've got different species of Glacillaria. The same thing with Irish sea moss. Irish sea moss, the genus of that is called Chondis. And so that's just the category of the classification for Irish sea moss. Now within that category, you've got different species of Irish sea moss. So a lot of times people don't actually know what types of Irish sea moss they're actually getting. The main genus we're talking about is Chondis and the main species is Chondis crispus, right? So you see, that's the species of what the most prominent one is when it comes to iris sea moss. Now, when it comes to Gracilaria, depending on where you're getting the Gracilaria from will determine that species. Now, the one that I have is from St. Lucia. So that means that under the genus Glacilaria, we have the species Glacilaria edulis. And so this is what this is today. This is what I sampled was the Glacillaria edulis. And so we'll dive into what I thought about it, what it does. Can you please not eat the sea moss? You've already eaten today. We do better, do better, man. To show you guys a little bit more of what this actually looks like, because again, a lot of times what you guys are gonna find, please don't touch the sea moss. A lot of times what you guys are gonna find, a lot of sea moss is just labeled sea moss and it's assumed that it's just Irish sea moss, right? When you have so many different variations of some of these sea mosses and each one might afford something slightly different, for example, in terms of different qualities, different types of vitamins and minerals and nutrients. Now having said that, the bigger picture is always most important with these and regardless, the sea mosses that you're gonna have are gonna have antioxidants, phytonutrients, polyphenols in them that are designed to help your body to function better and reduce things like inflammation. Inflammation is a main driver for a lot of different diseases, even though we've categorized them differently. If you can combat that, you can combat a lot of other diseases as well. So Irish sea moss is a little bit more flattened, fanned out. It's gonna have more of a reddish color to it. And then the scent of it, usually Irish sea moss is gonna have a more powerful scent. It's almost like, feels like it's gonna slap you in the face type of scent, right? And so that's why they recommend if you're making a gel, add some lime to that to help to cut that smell down. Now, something like this is what I have, which is a Glacillaria edulis is where this is coming. Again, we know that because it's coming from St. Lucia, so that's the species of it, but with the genus Glacillaria. And where it's a little bit different is, I'll pull this out so you guys can see it. This sea moss actually is a little bit longer, more cylindrical, for example. So you can see the difference of this versus an Irish sea moss. You know, you know if a company's being authentic or not, they really know their product or they don't know their product if they're calling it sea Irish sea moss and it's actually uh, Glacillaria. So what else might they be missing? Irish moss is, can also be called carrageenan moss. And carrageenan guys coming from Irish moss has been shown to give people digestive issues, bloated issues, glucose intolerance, inflammation in the system, right? But what's also important for us to understand is what happens when we're consuming whole foods? Sometimes we get so caught up in this reductionist method to science where we extract things out of it, we study that and then try to associate that to the whole, and that's just not the case. If you're extracting carrageenan outside of all the other nutrients that sea moss has, and now you're saying, okay, on its own, carrageenan can cause issues, then this is in isolation away from how it's naturally supposed to be in its environment. Think about something like fructose. Fructose is in almost every single fruit you're gonna eat, but within the fruit, it's contained, it's in the right proportions, mixed in with everything else, and so now it, the fruit itself is healthy for you even though it contains fructose, but you take, extract fructose out of that, turn it into high fructose corn syrup, now you're gonna have an issue. Uh, how to find a good sea moss, because chances are you might have a hard time finding sea moss, or you might be like, can I trust this brand? Number one key way to trust a brand as well is to understand what you're looking at. Again, I showed you guys that I've got the Glacillaria sea moss over here. Now, if you've got a Glacillaria sea moss and their labeling is Irish moss, right off the bat, you can tell they're not credible because they're lying to you about what the sea moss is. The second thing that you wanna look at as well is, does it say wild crafted on the front of it? Because wild crafted means that they're getting it right out of its natural habitat. And so you, there's other ways that they can make this sea moss is creating pools. So they create pools in more of an artificial scenario where where they're creating sea moss that's not actually from its natural habitat, so you're not gonna get as many vitamins and minerals and nutrients that you could afford if you grabbed it right from its natural habitat. One of the ways you can tell as well, again, is if it says wild crafted sea moss on it. Also, the one that I have, for example, says no preservative fillers or binders, and you can tell when I open this thing up, I mean, it's almost like the ocean smell is kind of hitting you in the face. You got a little bit, a little bit of sand on here. It's not really uniform in color either. It's, it's not really uniform in color either. Like some of the color, if you're, you might not be able to see it through there, but 
why you want to rinse this off because you want to get the sand and the debris off of it. And that's what you want. You want you should have to rinse it. If you don't have to rinse it, likely came from a pool, it's likely not going to have everything you need. And then if you got it in pill form too, now you're going back to that process extract stuff we just talked about. And so I always say, hey, get something guys where you guys can get it in its natural form so you guys are getting the most authentic version of it and going back to ayurvedic medicine text see where that's been used for thousands of years likely they, they weren't extracting out all these components in order to isolate them they were eating them whole and we know the benefits of a lot of these things in terms of what it can do for the body so, and so i want to break down some research that's been done as well because you guys don't like to dive into the research so you guys know it's not just me sharing my own thoughts i want to bring receipts for you guys there's some studies that i went through and I'll, i won't talk about all of them here today because i don't want to i don't want to make this video longer than it has to be to get you guys moving in the right direction but i'm going to drop some links uh in the description so you guys can go check out some of these journal articles for yourself one of the key things that cmos can help to do is to fight free radicals so free radicals are just atoms with unpaired electrons and so Elect atoms like to be stable, and these are the molecules that basically make up, these are the atoms, the structures, the components that make up uh, everything basically in our universe. It's taking you guys back to grade six science. So with the electrons that are around the atoms, they always wanna be paired so they can be stable. That's stability for an atom. Now, when there's an unpaired electron, it wants to connect and interact with other things. And unfortunately, when that happens, it causes tissue damage. Now, this can happen from eating the wrong foods. Think about the potato chips and the french fries over time. Environmental conditions, stress. Uh, high blood sugar levels, you know, that this can cause free radical damage. And so what CMOS does is it gets in there and it can help to fight and combat free radicals just because of its polyphenol antioxidant capabilities. And when this happens, it can help to improve, see cardiovascular improvements, can even fight cancers as well, which is interesting. And this study looks specifically at Gracilaria edulis, the one that we have right here, and looks specifically at its antioxidant activity. What they found was just, it has a powerful antioxidant capability to help the body to fight free radicals in the body, which can cause other things like cancers and cardiovascular issues as well. And so using something like CMOS, the conclusion was, uh, especially if we're talking about Gracilaria edulis, really helped to combat those issues and the free radical damage that was happening. Guys, guys, come on, come on guys. What this journal also looked at too, is it looked at Glassoloria specifically, the CMOS that I got you guys on right here today. They looked at the Glassoloria edulis and its ability to help with glucose control, blood sugar control, and how it does this. It's not necessarily the fiber, because you're gonna look at the back of CMOS sometimes and notice, yeah, it says it has fiber in it, but I mean a serving of dietary fiber in here is almost zero. And just because you're gonna need to consume a lot of CMOS in order to get the fiber that you need to be able to do what it's supposed to do to help to slow down the release of glucose in the body to better control blood sugars but what it actually does is there's other ways that your body can control the glucose release and that's if you can inhibit some of the enzymes responsible for breaking up starches in the body think about carbohydrates so what CMOS can do is help to become what's called an amylase inhibitor. And amylase is produced by the pancreas as an enzyme that helps to digest and break down starches and foods and also produced by the saliva as soon as you food enters your mouth. And what this can do is help kind of slow down that process of the breakdown of these sugars in your body, similar to the action of fiber. And so what we're showing you is that something like a CMOS can act kind of like fiber, not because you're getting a lot of the fiber indirectly through CMOS, even though you might hear all the time that there's fiber in CMOS, but because of the impact that it has on the enzyme amylase, again, whose responsibility is to break down those starches and can cause higher glucose spikes after a meal. And so getting CMOS in can help to regulate that. There's also an enzyme called glucosidase, and glucosidase's job is similar to amylase, where found mostly in your small intestine and it helps to break down more components to turn those into glucose. And now what CMOS is shown to do as well in these journal in this journal article is it's shown to also help in terms of slowing down that digestive process so that you don't have that heavy spike of glucose that's entering the bloodstream. And so the spike becomes more gradual and more controlled, which is especially great if you're a diabetic looking to get better control over your blood sugar levels. And so what we also know guys is that iodine is extremely important important for your body when it comes to helping with thyroid function. So if we're lower on iodine, that can get in the way of thyroid function. Then we think about weight gain that can happen and a disrupted metabolism that can happen when the thyroid isn't functioning right. And then down the road of that, we've got things like thyroid cancer. What this journal did was actually a case study. So they looked at uh, people in South Korea and they looked at what happens, and this is the journal Endocrinology and Metabolism in South Korea, and they looked at 
what happens when we take people who have thyroid cancer and don't, and we look at their diet and look at what they ate and find out that their intake of iodine and seaweed, especially specifically gim. And when I'm talking about seaweed, it might not be specifically the glassoluria that we talked about earlier, but what it also shows us is that a lot of these seaweeds and algae are related. And what they found was, again, it was inversely related. Thyroid cancer was inversely related based on their observations when it comes to their intake of iodine and gim, uh, seaweed. And so as they increase gim seaweed and more iodine, they also decreased their risk factor for thyroid cancer, which was in interesting. Now keep in mind, this was a case study as well. So you can't really isolate things too much and they had to dive in to kind of pick things apart and make these conclusions, but you can't really necessarily get causality out of a case study. But you can say it's interesting that we see that we increase the seaweed and the iodine, we're decreasing someone's susceptibility to the thyroid cancer. And so we're seeing there's a lot of study, a lot of materials out there that help us, especially with profound issues like cancer. And there's actually another journal article too, which looks dives deep on the Glassoluria ajulis and talks about bioactive components that can help fight cancer. And so what they found was when they dove deep on the polyphenols that we talked about, antioxidants, and you remember, the, the, the hallmarks of this is a lot of polyphenols, antioxidants to help to reduce inflammation in the body, prevent things like cardiovascular disease, we're talking about diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure. A lot of these diseases and issues that we go through are all stemming from similar issues of high inflammation in the body. And so if you can heal that and you can de-stress the body, you can heal a lot of issues that happen. And what they found when they studied the Glassoluria ajulis is they found that the tumor suppressive proteins went up to help to suppress tumors that might be in the body. But what they also found was cell apoptosis went up. So helping program cell death for cells that might be forming in a way that they shouldn't be. Think about things like cancer, just weird cell formations that grow and grow and develop. And so when you have more increased cell apoptosis, cells that aren't functioning right or not growing the way that they should, then can in a sense kill themselves to allow you to be able to thrive more effectively. We're seeing a lot of different journal articles that are talking about the bioactive components of things like CMOS. Uh, it's been documented not only for just thousands of years, but even some recent journal articles here that I've talked about today. But I'm also gonna drop more in the comments as well, just to, again, receipts for the things that I'm saying to you guys. And you know, one of the things that I noticed while being on it for 30 days, especially this one specifically, is very easy to use, and the best way to use this, guys, is in a gel form. So I can actually drop a, drop a comment. If you guys want me to do a CMOS gel video, I'll probably just do it anyway. I'll do a gel video, but this is a gel right here. So I use this. I have about a tablespoon or two of this. Uh, you know, every morning I have that fasted, and I make that using the CMOS over here, and bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. But you can mix that in with sauces. You can mix it in with uh, protein shakes. You name it, you're good to go. Uh, one of the things I noticed, man, for me with the CMOS, my focus is a lot better, improved energy, uh, blood sugar control. I didn't really notice too many crazy things with my blood sugar, but it's been pretty in check recently, so um, that's what it is. I mean, I do notice that when I start my day with something clean, and maybe it's just clean stuff that I start my day with, my blood sugars are better throughout the day. I feel better throughout the day as well. And so starting with my day with something like CMOS just helps me feel better throughout the day because I've already laid the foundation of something that I know is gonna benefit my body, not just because I'm saying it because I'm verified, I'm backing that with research, but it's also stuff that I'm feeling as well. It helps with my clarity of mind, my focus, uh, energy levels, and even potentially the glucose control. Again, for me, I can't 100% say glu glucose control because uh, my blood sugar has been pretty good. So was it the CMOS or was it the fact that I'm just eating clean? It is what it is, but definitely something that now I have it in the morning, almost like a multivitamin. Think about preventive measures, like I talked about with the thyroid cancer that happened here. We can take something like CMOS and just use it as preventive measures, almost like having a multivitamin that's just straight from nature, because we also know that CMOS has a significant amount of vitamins and minerals that your body needs and requires. And so if you're low on a lot of things, having a couple of tablespoons of this in the morning can help you to get, give your body the vitamins and minerals that might be missing. So for me, guys, uh, C, this CMOS for me, guys, give me so, CMOS a solid, a solid eight for me out of 10. For me, the CMOS solid eight out of 10. For me, that's an A uh, just because of what it can do. I haven't seen one study that tells me that CMOS is bad for you. And I've been on this one specific for 30 days. I'll put a link in the description as well if you guys want to try this one out like what I did. Another side note I'm going to give you guys, if you guys actually have a scoop of shilajit with this, you've got fulvic acid in here. And I talk about this a lot in my other shilajit videos. That helps your body to absorb vitamins, absorb nutrients, absorb minerals even better. And so it can actually help you to just take this whole thing to another level. So 
if that's something you're interested in too, guys, I'll just leave the Shilajit description in the link in my uh, the description of this video. If you guys haven't got on Shilajit yet, man, check out my videos, guys. I don't want to see you guys miss out on any of that. A lot of people have been asking me for some great sea moss, and again, wild crafted. Uh, we're getting this direct from St. Lucia as well. None so of that pool shit or the extracts and pills. Again, you want to avoid the pills as well because the pills you get in a powdered form. It's going to be watered down. You're not going to get the right, the raw, authentic sea moss, and that's what you guys want if you want to take things to the next level with this. All right, so that's just my opinion guys hey it is what it is everyone has their opinion based on the research i've done it's way to go i'm gonna do a gel video too so you guys know what's up with this gel over here that i make that i have uh, almost every morning two tablespoons of that in the morning one to two tablespoons in the morning sometimes mix it in my shakes uh, and so I'll do a video on how you guys can make the gel. It's so simple, guys, I promise you, it's, it's nothing. And the, probably the easiest way that you can consume this as well. 